What's poppin'? Y'all, it's your boy, the coolest dude on YouTube. And we coming with some more videos, and it's Friday. You know what I'm saying? And it's time for a lot of us to hit the highway. You know what I mean? And so what we about to do really right this moment is do another video reaction my way. You know what I mean? You know that song about us in my way. I got to bring some music today, man. And we finna get it in, though, man. We finna get our funny on right now, though. Um, we finna get our funny on with, um, um, let me see, Ronnie Ching, man. This is a Chinese comedian, man. You know what I'm saying? Even though, you know, China siding with Russia or whatever with this little war thing or whatever, it don't stop us from laughing at the funny, though. You know what I'm saying? And that's why I'm saying that's what it's about, man. It's about everybody getting along with all these newfound activities that we got that brings people together, man. That's what we basically need right now. We need a lot of laughter in our life, man. You know what I mean? That's real talk. So what we finna do, we finna check him out and see how funny he is, man. Because I'm going to tell y'all my top five comedians right now. You know what I'm saying? Definitely Eddie Murphy. You know what I'm saying? Cat Williams. We got Martin Lawrence. You know what I mean? And then we got Eddie Griffin, man. You know what I mean? That's my top right there. And then it's like Richard Pryor. Then, you know what I'm saying? We got Fred Sanford. You know what I'm saying? Um, um, Dolomite. We got, nigga. I mean, it's, 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 I got a lot of little, man. I'm going to bring all my comedians to life, though. You feel me? So we finna see what dog talking about. He's from China. So we want to see what he got to say, man. You know what I'm saying? I love a little funny, man. So without no further ado, let's go and get it in, man. Look, Ronnie Ching, man. 15 minutes. Let's get it in. Hit! Let's see how funny dog is. Let's go. Of course, every race has its racist, awful people. The problem is we keep comparing the worst 10% of one race with like the best 10% of another race. <laughs> Hey, that's real talk, though. That's real talk. He said that best right there. We got somebody in every race that's like just like bad, delusional, bipolar, however you could, criminals, demonic, devils, however y'all want to put it. Right? Which is obviously a mistake. <laughs> because what we should be doing is we should be getting the worst 10% of every race <laughs> and comparing that. So we can figure out which is the worst race. <laughs> like, you know what? Fuck it. Let's do it right now. Yeah, let's do it right now. Let's figure out which is the worst race. Right now. Okay? You guys up for it? Yeah. All right, go. Go. Okay, cool. On three, I want you to shout out which race you think is the worst. <laughs> right? Okay? No, no, no. Don't worry. Don't worry. We'll all do it together. We'll all do it together. I'll join in. Of course, I'll join in. Right? No, don't worry, this is a comedy show. This is a safe space. We ask you to put your phones away for this moment right now. Now's the time to let it out. This is it. Don't, don't bottle up and go crazy outside. Let's let, let it out now. Let the demons out now, all right? Okay? You don't even have to be specific, okay? Just shout a color. Okay? Okay? Guys, we all know what the answer is going to be. Hey, hey, on the real, it's like, you if you you if you say Chinese, Mexicans, or if you say white people or whatever, it's like they all way lighter than us. So as soon as you say black or dark, you know what I'm saying? There you go. So it's like this, man. We we we, we you know, we've been persecuted against, man. Come on, man. Let's go though. It's crazy. <laughs> I'm really you. All right. Okay. On three. Worst race on three. Okay? One. This is happening. <laughs> Whether you join in or not, you might as well say something. Even if you don't believe it, just as a creative exercise. Just lay it out. It's like speaking in tongues. Just go. All right, okay, on three. Okay, worst race. On three. All right? Okay, one. Worst race. Two. Three. Human race. If you said anything, you're the worst temperature of your race. <laughs> that was fucking disgusting. Bunch of goddamn racists coming to my show in New York City. Completely missing the point of that joke. 
Yeah, it's been great yeah, meeting the different types of Americans as well. Um, think of every of the different races, different ethnicities, different cities, all different people. Of all the Americans I've met, I think African Americans have got to be the coolest race uh, of them all. All right, I'm sorry. They're the coolest. Everything they do is just cooler. Everything they touch is just smoother, right? Sports, science, music, presidencies, right? Everything they do. Hey, on the real dog. He telling the truth. Y'all gotta telling the truth. Man, it's coming from somebody else. Come on, man. They got the swag. Black people have the swag. You cannot deny the swag. Black people have the swag. Even white supremacists are like, yeah, they have swag. It's like undeniable coolness. Like, yeah, black people are so cool, they can own their own racial slur, okay? That's how cool they are. No other minority in America is cool enough to own their own slur. All right, you never see Chinese people walking around just going, hey, yo, hey, yo, my chinks. Yo, where my chinks at? Yo, holler at me, chinks. Yeah. My chinks. Hey, stay yellow, my fellows. What? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds awful. It's like nails on a chalkboard. My chick, my chick, my chick. <laughs> I think outside of America, we, we think of America as like a monolith, right? Like America, Americans, like one entity, right? But you live here long enough, you realize it's such a big country. Every state is like its own nation unto itself, their own cuisine, their own way of talking, Central. their own values, LA. their own flags. Right? That's why there's so much division here. It's all these different countries trying to federate. And it becomes so obvious once you start living here. You can tell the difference between the different types of Americans, the different energies, right, from East Coast to West Coast. It's so obvious. You can call it out. Like East Coast Americans, super intense. <laughs> right? West Coast, everyone calms the fuck down a bit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's like the East Coast of America, everyone's still fighting the British. It's like they never got over it. America is like, the whole world is in trouble. Let's use everything we've ever learned, our entire knowledge base, every resource at our disposal, every immigrant who ever got a PhD, every local born PhD student, let's combine forces and create this miracle mRNA vaccine in under a year. And we did it and it fucking works and fuck you, we're not gonna take it, fuck you. We're not taking that shit, we're not taking that. You take it, we're not taking it, you take it. Oh what, oh what, you want it? Oh you want it? Well, Fuck that, we're not gonna give it to ya! We'd rather throw it in the river! We'd rather throw it in the river, go suck it up from the river, suck it. Suck my dick. Fuck you and fuck us. Fuck you and fuck us. Oh, what? What? Does it work? Oh my god, it works like a charm! It's like a 90% efficacy, it blows all our simulations out of the water, but fuck that shit, we're not taking it. Fuck you and fuck us. Hey, I took it. Both of them, both boosters, all that. You know what I mean? And still, right now today, cool. You know what I mean? So you got to believe something sometime because wherever there's a virus that they do got a cure. But it's like, you know what I'm saying? If it's super bad, it'll be for the rich, though. You know what I'm saying? It's like Magic Johnson had AIDS for years and he the most healthiest dude y'all see. Real talk. So they got like, you know what I'm saying? Medicines for all that shit in reality. though. You know what I mean? But they still it's like a population control type of thing. And that's what they constantly trying to like, you know, Get it, you know, they trying to like put that in the man though, you know what I mean? However, they can do it. If they can put us all on a big old shuttle on a free trip or something and blow it up or something like that, and we all on it, they'll love to do some shit like that. Real talk. That is the most American shit ever. <laughs> yeah, like I said, I used to live in Australia, I started doing comedy in Australia. Um, Australia was always very really good to me. Uh, my wife is Australian, and I love my wife a lot. I love my wife so much, I married her three times. That's right, I married the same woman three separate times. Why? Because when you have Asian parents, you have to get married. In every fucking country you have relatives in. <laughs> because Asian parents have to brag, okay? And I know every parent has to brag. I'm not trying to take anything away from anyone. 
Okay, I'm just saying Asian parents also have to brag, and like weddings is how they do it. <laughs> so we had to get married three times. So the first wedding we had in Melbourne, Australia, because my wife is from Melbourne, Australia. Then we got married in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, even though I'm not from Kuala Lumpur, but who gives a fuck what the groom wants, right? <laughs> Let's just find the landmark in Malaysia everyone can pronounce with the most direct flights. <laughs> and then we got married in New York for green card purposes. Okay, so, <laughs> so three very romantic weddings for the right reasons. Chain migration. And, <laughs> and let me tell you something. Let me, let me speak from the heart here for just one minute, okay? If you take nothing else away from the show here tonight, please just hear me now, okay? I'm speaking from personal experience here. There are fewer joys you will experience in life than organizing three weddings at the same time. <laughs> oh my God, it's so much fun and so easy to do. <laughs> I highly recommend it. So like whenever I bring up another country to my American friends. My American friends will always bring up the one fact they read one time on the back of a Snapple cap. <laughs> and they'll just like, throw it back at you. And you try to use it to paint the entire history of your civilization with like whatever half-remembered back of the brainstem regurgitated <laughs> fact. They can just flick it from this part to like this part as quickly as possible, right? <laughs> Just spit it out. Like when I tell my American friends, like I grew up in Singapore, they're, they're always like, Singapore? You grew up in Singapore? They cane people in Singapore, <laughs> right? Like in Singapore, if you spit gum on the floor, someone just runs up immediately behind you and just canes you in your ass, right? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> So don't fucking do that shit. <laughs> what is it, some kind of innate need of yours? To visit other people's countries and spit gum on the floor? In which case, please do not visit Singapore because they will cane you on your fucking face. <laughs> and like some Americans yeah. are like outraged by that. Yes. The thought of grown men being caned on the ass oh, for God. being a dick. <laughs> it's like outrageous to them. But what's funny is you ask any American, especially any New Yorker, what they would do if a guest came into their home and spit gum on the floor. Anybody would go off on that, anybody. You could spit like out somebody car. You know what I'm saying? It's like, that's just nasty. There's a appropriate place for people to spit, you know what I'm saying, without doing it in a mo in, in a disgusting way, put it like that, you know what I mean? Real shit. It would be like we would beat the fuck out of it. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that's what we do in Singapore. <laughs> we just outsource the ass right? kicking to the government. <laughs> it becomes a more cost efficient punishment for everyone involved. <laughs> Why we pay our taxes? <laughs> My first week in New York, uh, I was on this crowded subway train, and it was packed all the way to the doors, right? I'm on the train, and it's packed all the way to the doors, and the doors start closing in front of me. And as the doors start closing, this guy, like, walks up to the closing train doors and just jams his fingers. <laughs> just right into the door, no regard for his limbs or appendages. Like, his need to get on this train exceeded his need to grip things. He did a cost-benefit analysis in his head. <laughs> and he was like, you know what? This is overrated, right? <laughs> Who needs this motion? Who needs this point of articulation, right? Let's get on this train, my life will be perfect. So it just creates enough of a gap to stop fighting. And he fights this train for eight seconds. He just fights it to a stalemate. Okay, it's a judge's decision. He can't move, the train can't move, no one can move. <laughs> And after eight seconds, he gets like tired. He starts gassing out. <laughs> so he uses his head to jam up the door. <laughs> like a door stop. As he like, readjusts his grip, right? He starts chalking up his hands for round two. 
and I'm standing there just facing the top of his oily scalp. Yeah, right. He's thinking, yo, man, just let it go. All right. I'm new in town, right, I'm no not play. sure if I'm supposed to help you, or if we're both gonna get arrested. Okay, I don't know the social etiquette in this situation. All I know is there's a train in three minutes. That shit would never fly in Malaysia. Where I'm from, in Malaysia, you stick your hand in the door, the door's closed, you get dragged for like a mouth. Right, right. You Here, get brought it. to your knees by the sister. As the train runs over you, it starts going after your family, right? You start, you start like bleeding out on the tracks. The doors open, we all walk over your dead corpse. <laughs> yeah, that's what you get, you dumb fuck. <laughs> Not in America. In America, one man can stop the entire train line. Because everyone can make a difference. <laughs> like, I was walking down West 4th Street in Manhattan, in New York City, minding my own business, not looking at my phone, actually paying attention to the world around me. During the pandemic, right, just trying to get some fresh air, actually having a nice night. I was walking on the street in Manhattan, looking around, and out of nowhere, this woman walks right up to me, grabs me on the throat, and just starts squeezing. So like I throw her off, and then she squares up. <laughs> and then I look at her, and I just walk away. <laughs> and that's like a normal interaction in New York. You can't fuck around in New York, nigga. You'll get cut up fast. You know what I'm saying? That's why I keep me a dagger, dog. I'm telling you, dog. They are just, they don't even have to shoot you. You know what I'm saying? They don't even do drive-bys out there. They walk by. Real talk. None of us said a word. <laughs> the entire time, we didn't even make a sound. <laughs> we didn't review each other because we both knew what was going on. We both knew what that whole thing was about. <laughs> I looked at her and I was like, Oh, you crazy. <laughs> Just like everyone on the internet. All right, see you later, crazy. I didn't engage and I walked away. And then she looked at me and she was like, Oh, this is not a man who's gonna fight a woman on the street. <laughs> see you later, man. And then we just went separate ways. And that was the end of it. And I still respect that woman more than these fucking Twitter Yelp reviewing bloggers. <laughs> because she was unhappy about something in her life. She got off her ass and did something about it. <laughs> she didn't just sit behind a keyboard tweeting with her balls, critiquing other people's creations without making anything for themselves, like a bunch of parasites eating the host. No. She didn't like Asian people. She went to commit a hate crime. <laughs> and I can respect that. That's proactive. It's gone to a point where you can flunk out of med school, very next day review doctors. It doesn't make any sense. Everybody reviewing everything, like they're experts. People reviewing comedy. Can you imagine that? Who the fuck reviews comedy? We do, because that's what we're doing right now. You know what I'm saying? A hey, comedy, man, it keeps people from getting mad, man. Real talk. So gravitate to the comedy, because it'll keep you from being upset. You know what I'm saying? It's always good to laugh. Man. So what the fuck do you know about it? <laughs> Ever been on stage in your life trying to tell me how to do my job? That's like me going to a maternity ward in a hospital and giving women tips on how to give birth. <laughs> yeah, what kind of fucking asshole would go into a maternity ward and just look for women in labor? Just go, hey, you really should be pushing harder during childbirth. <laughs> you don't look like you're pushing hard enough during childbirth. Well, I think you're relying too much on your ethnic background <laughs> during childbirth. Oh, the C-section? Well, that's a real lazy form of childbirth. Two stars.
It's also not my job to teach you how to fucking do comedy, all right? If you want to find out how to do this, you go do an open mic multiple times a night for the next decade, and you come and tell me, all right, if you think there's no artistry to this, if you think it's just about saying offensive shit or never saying anything offensive ever, then you fucking go do it. You do it and you tell me. Hey, that's real spit, though, because I'm going to tell you, the comedians, that's kind of like the hardest job to really do. A rapper can get up there, throw the beat on, have his, um, you know, lokes on or whatever, ain't really looking at the crowd, and you could just be that character, you know what I'm saying? When you're standing on that stage, though, and you're telling people jokes, you got to make them laugh, dog, on the real, though, or you will get booed and heckled the shit out of, you know what I'm saying? So straight up, though, so I commend any comedian that can stand up there and, and make people laugh for a good 40 to, to an hour, 45 minutes to an hour. You know what I'm saying? Now, one of my newest comedians is about to be Charleston White. Because dude is comical. Dude is funny. You know what I'm saying? Y'all got to gravitate the dog. And he be telling the truth, too, though. So we'll be back with some more funny. You know what I'm saying? But y'all got to click that button. You know what I'm saying? For your buddy. Holler at me. You know what I mean?